Welcome. Turn it way up. Turn it up. Turn it up even more. I want, yeah. Turn this up, too. Yeah. There we go. Welcome to Fat Man Beyond. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Hey! Uh, we are here at the Scum and Villainy Cantina here in Hollywood, right on Hollywood Boulevard. Man, put your hands together so the folks... I, did, I almost forgot what they were supposed to put together. <laughs> put your hands together so the folks at home know you're real, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, how, how the fuck are you, man? Dude, I am... I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. There's, I'm, I'm, it's so funny. We have to play. Uh, there are things I know about him uh, that I know why he's good. Um, <laughs> but he can't talk about it yet, man. But no. soon he, uh, he can. So is say, that, that's the big part that, of it? That's one of it. Yeah. One of the things I can talk about is uh, I, I was working on a television show about a year and a half ago. No? Yeah. Eight months ago. Time. What? Uh, called Treadstone. Yeah. The sort of like the Jason Bourne universe, which we couldn't say the words Jason and or Bourne in the show at all. Is that right? Yeah, literally. He's only ever, spoilers, referred to as the asset, maybe, or like the one that went rogue, I think. Um, but the first trailer for Treadstone dropped, yeah. and the first fucking title card says, from the world of Jason Bourne comes blah, blah, blah. I'm like, motherfuckers, we had to bend over backwards to not say that word. And it's right in the fucking marketing. <laughs> they but, got one use, and they <laughs> used it. Use. Um, but yeah, no, the first trailer dropped. And that is you have to go really, really. No, it's, it's surreal because, I mean, you know it. There's, Do you see any of your work in the trailer? I, yeah. You're like, I wrote that moment. I yeah, wrote this line. Like there's one, but that's what I did that beat. But it's weird because you spend, you know, six months in a room writing a show. Right. And you think, hey, this could be pretty good. But they're also going to go and shoot a show. And, you know, no plan survives a contact with the enemy. So it's like the show that you wrote. Wait, say that again? No plan survives contact with the enemy. Where'd you get that? Uh, war. <laughs> <laughs> I hear a tell. Yeah, no, they, Ain't no fun. Um, that um, w no plan survives contact with the enemy. It's and like, the idea of that, break it down real quick. The idea of that is you, you can come up with a plan, but fucking once the enemy happens, that's it. Right. Like they will do not exactly at all what you expected them to do. So you need to be able And to you jack these up even more as much as you can. Yeah. Seems low this week. Sorry, folks. You're seeing a little bit backstage. Uh, up front, if, just to put things on Front Street, uh, Andrew, who is a fucking saint and is always here with us doing the show every week is pulling down five rolls this week uh, because JC, who normally pulls down four rolls himself, mm. took off uh, to Chicago for a family thing, a good family thing. So, Great. fucking hell, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Andrew. Remembering I had a heart attack a year and a half ago. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> um, so... Andrew is uh is just like kind of he's the octopus man in the cartoon just pulling a bunch of controls, not yeah. to be confused with the Aquaman octopus who, octopus who is like beating the drums and shit. Yeah, not that guy. I just rewatched that baked and it really works. <laughs> um, whole fucking movie, man. But anyway, back to yeah, you. yeah, yeah. So yeah, the idea is that once you have a plan, the plan will always change once you actually encounter your opposition. So in making a TV show, you write the show, you shoot the show, and then you edit the show. And all along those processes, it's possible for the show to change three different times. Okay. You know, so once you get actors on the stage, once you get cameras, once you're in locations, once you realize, oh, shit, that was supposed to be a bridge. We don't have access to a bridge. Now it's just a highway. It's like, oh, he can't jump off a highway. Can we, how do we rewrite this to make this work? Oh, this actor's great at comedy. We didn't write him any comedy. Let's put a couple of laugh lines in there. Oh, shit, that guy can't drive. And yet here's a car chase where he's driving. Maybe a different car. Like, it just becomes... A game of what do we have? What can we do? How can this all work together? Mm -hmm. And that's different than the script that you write. And then there's the script, there's the, the, the show that you shoot, and then you take all of that footage and then you put it into editing. And then that's the last draft of a TV show, it's just like the last draft of a movie. Right. You can change wildly the things that you thought you were going to do. On, on the script once you get into post. Once you realize, oh, we didn't get that shot that we needed, but we have another shot here that's pretty good. We don't need 80% of this interchange between these two characters. We can get all of this across in a line. And we have the line, we'll just cut every other fucking thing. 
you know, and so as a writer, you do the best you can do in the stage that you're involved in, right. and then they go off and make a show, and you have no idea if it's gonna look any good or not. So to watch the trailer, like, I was surprised, and not like coy, it's like, wow, this show looks pretty good. And like, I'm not trying to be like dodgy or weirdly self-serving, like I just had no idea if this show was gonna be any good. And what do you mean? It lo- looks slick, or it, it looks, looks it looks big. Like really? it looks like oh shit! There's a bunch of like neck punching and a bunch of like car chasing, and because that's what you want, right? You want like fucking a dude who is not Jason Bourne at all to be like magazining dudes in the larynx and yes. like toastering motherfuckers aside the head. Like you just want all of that. I just the fucking flabbergasted that your idea of big is neck punching. <laughs> if you do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it looks it looks it looks like, like they a turned into something. So wait, th- when you saw the trailer, mm. you ain't seen anything? No. Yet? You never saw an episode or as far as I know the I think the They don't pilot, do that for you guys? They're not like, come watch your shit. They they will when they get to my episode, or at least they should when they right. get to my episode. They're like, Hey, come and look at a cut. Let us know if you have any thoughts, any notes, what do you think? Anything we can you know, what do you see that we haven't seen? Uh, but at this stage, like I wrote the seventh episode of the run, and they are probably just now cutting two, maybe right, three. Right, right. So they may get around to like. Get They'll get around here. to it later. But it's oh hey, oh it's pretty good. Where is it? Where is it going to be? USA, and then Amazon International, and I think Hulu, um, day and date, which means that you can watch it at eight o'clock at night on fucking USA, and then if you want to see it again, like ten o'clock that night, it'll be on Hulu. Fucking hey, man. Give it up for Mark. He's got a goddamn show. Television. What? Um, what else you got going on? Fucking, you're busy. I'm busy. I, uh, I went to the opening of the Alamo Draft House in L.A. Oh, how is that? Holy shit. I've been to dude. others around the country. I've not, of course, been to this one. I haven't been to any. This is my first Alamo experience, period. Um, I, I feel bad that I'm gonna have to cheat so hard on the arc light. Like, to you guys at home, like LA is lousy with great movie theaters, but the fucking- Arc light ha- being the gold standard, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not, that's not me saying it. That's the, you know, it seems to be most people like, fuck, I'll overpay to see a movie there. Um, <laughs> it, it's a gorgeous place where that came out, what, 10 years ago, 12, yeah, maybe 15 yeah. at this point? Yeah, long time. I remember they opened when I moved out here. Yeah, you so, told me that's why you moved. Pop, <laughs> yeah, actually, it was part of the reason. When I, one of the tipping point factors of, uh, like, you know, my wife had been badgering me for, like, three years. Like, let's move to California. And I was like, nah, man, New Jersey rocks. And then, uh, and then it, because it does. And then, uh. We went to see Election in a packed uh, multiplex movie theater, and it looked like they were projecting it through a glass of milk. The whole, whole time it was fucking out of focus. And I got up three times, and it was a big theater, so it was a big like fucking walk up and, and back. And uh, by the end of the movie, I was like, that's it. We're moving to the place where movies are in focus and shit like that. Um, but in any event. Yeah, so the Draft House, it's like they, a... They fetishize movies there. They fetishize movies. Yeah, like for those, movie. I'm sorry, I forgot. Arclight, gold standard. The, the Draft House. And what are they calling it? Alamo it's Draft Alamo House? Draft Los House Angeles? LA, yeah. LA? And it's downtown. It's literally like right on... I'm not getting paid for this either. I just kind of loved it. Yeah, either. But it's like, oh, you can get there easy on the Metro, <laughs> which nobody will use, but they say that you will. But it's like right off the red line in this new like, thing called The Block. So you jump out. You can really take a train there? Yeah, yeah. From like Hollywood and Vine. You can just head down. It's like four stops. And then you're in like movie heaven. uh, For those that don't follow this thing very closely, the Alamo Draft House started in Austin. Yes. Uh, And then, of course, branched out into other locations uh, around Texas first and then other places in the world, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's one in Brooklyn or New York. Yeah, like they have a video store in there. A legit fucking, you can go and rent movies, videots in the, the store, in, in, the, in the draft house. Wow. It's a, it's a dining theater, so like you sit at your fucking movie seat and you just write down your car, it's like, I wanna have a cheeseburger. I wanna have one of these 50 beers they have on tap because I wanna be drunk while I watch fucking Hobbs and Shaw. Why would I not wanna be drunk while I'm watching Hobbs and Shaw? It's Hobbs and Shaw. Um, and, uh, and they also have a very strong like repertory feeling where they're doing like Terror Tuesdays and like Sunday brunch movies and like it is just, it wants to be the place you go to not just like watch movies, to like 
eat and breathe and drink movies in. No doubt. And uh, it's gorgeous. It's lovely. Um, I'm glad they finally got here. How many screens? 12. Fuck, really? Yeah. How big are, well, it's like 60 to 100? It's not the, the Yeah, they don't, they, it's definitely not like, we have the fucking Chinese, like, yeah. which has, you can fit 500 people in that theater. It's way more intimate than it is right. there, which is nice. It's nice. It's, it's like, if it was in Hollywood, it would be a real problem for the New Beverly. Right. You know, because it's like, oh, I want to go and I want to watch fucking The Abyss on a Wednesday night like this. Who's doing that shit now? The fucking draft house. Yeah, but do they show film or are they digital? Or they do both? both. Oh, shit. Yeah, so 35 millimeter prints of stuff. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Fuck. I mean, <laughs> Quentin the filmmaker, totally fine in this world. Mm. Quentin the movie theater owner might have something to worry about. Yeah, a little bit. A little, little bit. But it's gorgeous. You should go. If you're I here, you should go. You absolutely won't. absolutely make it down there. No, I do want to go just to see. I've been to the other one, so I'd love to see how they did it here. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, did I do anything else this week? I went to a movie. I went to a premiere of, uh, I mean, I know it's not really on brand for what we talk about here, but uh, a Motown documentary, Hitsville, USA. Ooh, very cool. Um, that I guess the, the, is airing on Showtime. It was fucking dazzling and wonderful. And uh, I'd never, I've heard the name Barry Gordy my whole life. Mm -hmm. Never once laid eyes on him, I don't think. Because mm -hmm. when they, you know, they introduced him in the movie, I'm like, that's not Barry Gordy, you know? <laughs> and Barry Gordy was sitting a few rows ahead of me and shit. So it was, it was uh, I'm a big fan of all that music. It was a big part of my childhood and whatnot. And it's woven its way into my life and work forever. And watching... Uh, uh, Barry Gordy and Smokey Robinson talk about how Motown got started and got built. It's just beautiful, man. It's like an American dream. And he based it on like the, the Detroit Motor Factory, mm -hmm. like the Ford Factory, the idea of there was an assembly line. And so he was like, we could do that like with music, couldn't we? And so he set up an assembly line in like just a little two-story house in the burbs and shit. Oh my God, it was really, really good. I think it's on Showtime like this month or next month. Did you ever see, I think it's 20 Feet from Stone. Yes. Which, this is one of my secret like passions, man. Like, yeah, show don't, documentaries. do not get me started on Whitney Houston. I am a Whitney Houstonologist, <laughs> my friend. Like, oh, I can go deep, long and hard and shit like that. I'll get on a soapbox about what they did and whatnot and stuff. <laughs> Um, so I, there's stuff that I don't really talk about in, in like, of course, obviously here because we talk about genre stuff, but I, I love that documentary too. Oh, yeah. No, but like the 20 Feet from Stardom is all about like Motown and backup singers. Like that's the, like, hey, she's out there and we're all back here, but we also can fucking sing and we have stories and there's the shit that we've seen over, you know, 50 years in the business and it's fascinating. It's an amazing doc. Uh, I didn't see any documentaries. This What'd week. you see? I saw, I finished The Boys. Oh, yeah? Everyone, nothing but love for it. Oh, I see shit. on social media. I loved episode one. Oh, man, it is so good. Kept and delivering? It kept delivering. I am, I, I had never seen this guy named Anthony Starr before. He plays Homelander. Holy shit, dude. This guy's amazing. You dug. Because he does this thing where, like, he's Superman for like 60% of the show. And then like that, he's Hannibal Lecter. Like literally, he flips on a dime and suddenly he's a sociopath. And it's so much fun to watch because he wouldn't be a sociopath if you're fucking Superman. You would sure, like, should I save this plane? Maybe. <laughs> I'm just saying, they'll know we were here and we don't want that to happen. So maybe all of these people should just die. You guys will be fine. Take care. Like, it's, it's amazing. Right. So good. Um, I, I, I mean, we talked about it a little bit the last episode. I was surprised as shit by the first four because it's like, oh, this could be bad. And it's not bad. I didn't quite realize exactly how fucked up it was going to get until you get to the end. Right. And it's, oh, it's juicy. Oh, man. I love it to death. I'm in. There's this one sequence where uh, there's, a, there's a support group for uh, survivors of, what, like, accidental casualty survivors or whatever. Like, people whose lives have been ruined by, like, a mistake that a superhero made. Mm. And there's this interview with these two guys, one of which is played by Malcolm Barrett, um, who's from Timeless. 
And, uh, and then she's like, well, you know, I was, uh, I, I'm a writer. Like, I write, like, marketing materials for, like, Vought, which is the, the company that kind of runs the superheroes. Like, I, I write marketing materials for them, and there was one superhero who, you know, I'm not going to say her name, but, you know, she, uh, she kind of, she took a liking to me. She took a fancy to me. Like, and nobody wants to fuck the writer. And I felt it so hard. <laughs> 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 Uh, and then he tells the story, and the uh, and the punchline to that story is amazing. Um, but no, if you haven't seen the boys, you should watch the boys. If you've seen the boys, fucking watch the boys again, because <laughs> it's oh man, it's so good. Um, uh, what did I do? I have anything? I, fuck, there's so many things I want to talk about, but I can't for a little for a minute. Red hot minute. You know what else I saw? <gasps> oh, good, take I over. Because <laughs> I was just about to spill one. I was like, fuck it, and then. <laughs> Then you went, and I'm like, good, yeah, go, yeah, keep tell going. Me, tell me. Uh, I didn't see the first season of The Terror. Um, I hear it's very good on okay. AMC, uh, produced by Ridley Scott. The first season was very much like, you know, Antarctic exploration, voyage that goes horribly awry because there's like a fucking Sasquatch or some shit. I don't know. Um, it's good, though, right? Like, has anybody seen it? AMC? I'm sure it was on, like, right after The Walking Dead, any of the 400 times The Walking Dead is on any given week. <laughs> Um, the second season is called uh, The Terror Colon Infamy and it's about um, Japanese internment camps and, and there's a ghost or some shit that's kind of loose in an internment camp. I saw the first episode. I don't know. It's probably a ghost. I can't tell. But the thing that I love about it is it's so specific to that experience which I know nothing about because I'm an American uh, and we, there's atrocities that we choose to not pretend that we had anything to do with, like just imprisoning generations of Japanese people on, under the fear that they might have had something to do with Pearl Harbor. Right. Um, and so it's both an immigration story about people like nobody loves America quite like an immigrant does, and how these people, like I was born here, I moved here, I left, I crossed the ocean to come here, and because we were at war with like that place that was my country that I voluntarily left, you're going to imprison me and my family with no due process and no, no hope, honestly, of being able to get out of here alive. And so what if you imprison these people and then there's a ghost that they can't get away from? Oh, God. And, and it's just, and it's, I love those stories that manage to take place in a culture that is both mine and not mine, but has all of the texture of a world it's lived in. It has all of the sort of cultural kind of like waypoints and signifiers of, oh, shit, that's frightening, and I've never heard of it before. It's like history lesson plus Japanese horror. Mm. And it's awesome. What is it on? AMC. AMC, that's right. We established that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should watch that too. Learn a little something, kids. It's educational and super fucking frightening. Um, fuck, man. I saw, what did I watch this week? Endgame 12 times. <laughs> Uh, let me sell you on this independent film nobody's seen yet. It's real fucking uplifting. What's it um, about? You know, a bunch of ragtag bunch of kids got to stop this fucking nutsack chin motherfucker from outer space. <laughs> my wife came into the, my office today and uh, she was like on her way downstairs. But she, she's like, she comes into my office door. She goes, I heard soaring music. Are you watching Endgame again? And I was, it was, I was, and I was crying while doing it. And she goes, turned on a light, and she's like, are you, Christ, you're crying again? And I was like, it never gets bad. If you watch it over and over again, the game never ends. Oh, it's so fucking good. It's so masterful and shit. I can't, like, if I got a free hour, I'm like, all right, I'll fucking watch an hour. And then I'll piece together the rest of the time to, like, watch it. It's the way I used to eat cereal. <laughs> When I was a kid, I'd start with a bowl of cereal. I'd eat the cereal, and there'd be milk left. Mm. And I was like, oh, fuck, there's milk left. And so you put more cereal in it and shit. And then all of a sudden, you're like, oh, fuck, there's too much cereal. I need to add more milk and shit. <laughs> then you ate the cereal, and there was milk left. You're like, fuck, I got to eat more cereal. And before you knew it, you killed a box of cereal. That's how I treat Endgame. I was like, I'm just going to watch a few minutes and shit. And then all of a sudden, my day is shot. Like, Three hours have been fucking passed, and the dog's looking at me like, you've been dressed to take me for a walk for three fucking hours, man. 
I was like, I know, but I got invested big time. Like, I just want to see if they win. <laughs> Still holds up, man. It's really well fucking made. And, but, and I can't get past it. My wife is just, she was really, like, shocked that I could watch it as much as I did. And I was just like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, makes me feel good, makes me feel young, makes me feel happy. Like, and also, like, I learned shit as a storyteller. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, number one, I should have a brother. Um... <laughs> It's just, it's, I, that's, but unfortunately, I haven't watched anything new. Although, here. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it! Do it. Do it. I can, do it. I can, uh, do it. I, I'm just trying to think, like, we were talking before the show, I'm like, uh, what's happened? What can I talk about in the beginning of the show? Like, the opening. And, you know, everything is about stuff we can't really talk about. But, I can, I mean, I don't think I could, I could totally fucking say this. I met Frank Darabont. Really? Yeah, fucking dope dude. For those that don't follow that closely, he's the guy who made the Shawshank Redemption, mm -hmm. amongst other things, as well as The Walking Dead. He created yeah. the series The Walking Dead as well. Um, so, yeah, I had occasion to kick back and have a good old conversation with him, man. And that was kind of dope, because we both, like, you know, had breakout years 25 years ago. Shawshank's 25 years old, Clerk's 25 years old. So we kind of came up not together. I'd never met him before. But, you know, he was talking about, like, the 25th anniversary. I was like, it's, it's, it's uh, that for Clerk's, too. And he goes, oh, my God, that's right. And I was like, when we were on the festival circuit, like, me and Mosier, like, in a, paid in a movie theater to see Shawshank. Nobody was there, but, like, we fucking paid to go fucking see it. It was a matinee. It was fucking empty and shit. But, like, I was on board from year one and shit. And he was just like, I keep meaning to see clerks. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was cool though. Well, we did talk about something professional. It wasn't like, hey man, let's just fucking glad hand and shit. And the thing that we talked about is pretty fucking dope. So when I can tell you about it, hopefully I, uh, that'll be soon, I, I will. Enthusiasms. Enthusiasms, <laughs> yeah. It, it was pretty, I don't know. It's, it's, I never really meet other filmmakers, mm. and, and particularly ones that have been like kicking around as long as I have and stuff. So uh, it was kind of it was cool. Uh, I I can't say why. <laughs> I said this down. fucking show is becoming like a blind item but, column but and here, shit. I, can't tell you who, but no, I, I can't say why. But I posted the picture on Instagram, so it was not like I got to keep it private anymore. But like I got to spend some time with Sylvester Stallone. Which is so fucking weird, you guys. <laughs> because he's a lovely man, but I've never met anybody who's been famous for 50 years. And not like yeah. internet fame, yeah. not like, oh, well, I had a show on once on ABC. No, like, that motherfucker Are you was, talking about me? He, was, he is fucking world famous. He was famous at the time when they had publicists to manage image and like kill stories in newspapers and like when he couldn't walk across the street lest he be fucking mobbed by motherfuckers. Like real honest to goodness. Rocky is what, 1977? Same year as yeah. Star Wars? Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and so talking to that dude, <clears throat> it's so weird to be making references to like shit that I make references to, but they're his movies. Like, it's just weird. Like, yeah, man, you know, I, I did this book, and it was really influenced by, uh, by First Blood. It's like, you know, I, I gave uh, David Caruso his first job at First Blood. Really? Yeah, tell me that story. Oh, by the way, you know who's, like, the most wonderful person? Carl Weathers. I believe it. Let me tell you about when he came in to audition for fucking Rocky. It's like, <gasps> tell me all the stories, Sly. And he'll tell you all the stories because his life is full of stories and he's 73 years old. Fuck. Um, That's a podcast right there, it's, man. It is. Tell totally him to come down to the bar. That'd man, be amazing. Hey, man, let's talk about some shit. But, uh, but the one thing that I remember him talking about was uh, how hard it was for him to make action movies and then looking at a movie like Avengers Endgame and like, I mean, I guess it's hard. But Hemsworth can walk. I can't walk. Like, you know the shit that I did in those movies? Like, there's a picture of me in Rambo 3, hanging off the side of a horse. I was hanging off the side of that fucking no, horse. Oh, yeah. Take after take after take, and I fell down half the times, because I can't ride a fucking horse. 
Like Hemsworth? Like that shit is either digital or like face replacement. Like that guy is gonna be beautiful and handsome and perfect for the rest of his life. I'm broken. And wow, I like, man. Yeah, man. I never really thought about that. That is a dude who like hung from cliffs in cliffhanger. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no CG. Like I know he's hanging from the side of a fucking mountain. Meanwhile, like 20 years later, they're like, uh, action, Chris Hemsworth. And he's like, I pretended to catch a hammer. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> okay. But to be fair, he does it so fucking he sexy. He really does. Oh, when, when they go to battle and he catches fucking both of them, like, mm, mm, he just, I thrust with him and shit. <laughs> oh, fuck it, I love that moment. Let's kill him properly this time. I'm like, do it, Thor! <laughs> And I love the fucking look that he had at the end too, like the hardcore like Viking look. Mm -hmm. I thought that was tremendous and shit. I, I'll be honest with you. Some mornings I get up because I get up really fairly early. I'm usually up by seven, generally up between five seven every morning. And I do obviously wake and bake and stuff. And then I go to work. But like for the first half hour, fuck everybody else. That's mine. So I sat there and fucking get really baked. I had this fucking big ass caviar joint this fucking Don Pablo thing that just, it would take out a small nation. It's so fucking huge. <laughs> Smoke that, and I watched fucking Cap, uh, Thor, and um, Iron Man fight Thanos frame by frame. <laughs> so like, I watched the scene a zillion times forward, but like, I was like, fuck it, man. I, like, it moves so fast, I gotta analyze this shit. And so I put it in frame by frame mode. It is that shit, man, when you watch it that fucking slowly, because you just want to be like, run, you know, because you're seeing shit about to connect, and it's just like, as you watch it, you're like, fucking Thanos is an amazing tactician and fighter, and then you remember, like, he's a big special effect, but it's so fucking gripping, man. Did you see somebody on, on the Twitter, I think they found it, like, some deep Reddit dive, where all of the things are. Um, he, he cut in like the moment where Thanos is about to snap at the very end and he snaps, he's like, I am inevitable and he snaps and like it doesn't work. He, some dude, brilliantly, I'm assuming it's a dude because it's fucking Sabbath, but cuts in like Iron Man, the music. So it's just like, I am inevitable. And then it's just fucking, I am Iron Man. And then he's, I am Iron Man. It's perfect. Really? All of the fucking feels were just that music and just, oh, Tony, you're going to die now. <laughs> but he fucking does it with such style, man. You know what I fucking noticed now more than ever? It, spoilers if you haven't seen this movie. Yet. <laughs> but yeah, one the, of the $2 billion worth of people who seen it. I mean, the, the highest grossing movie ever made. But when he's like, and I am... Iron Man, and he snaps. He doesn't just fucking snap. He snaps at that motherfucker, like, <laughs> like look at it. It's it's like you know, cause they fucking go white out and shit. But yeah, it's not just like this and shit. It is fuck you, like, <laughs> oh, what a brilliant performance choice. Uh, yeah, that's all I've seen. All right, that's our upfront material. I believe that's it. Um, the, uh, <laughs> that's a foreplay. There is also Fat Man on He Man. Ha Fat Man on He Man. Yes. Uh, me and Mark are gonna do go do Fat Man Beyond uh, at PowerCon in Anaheim this weekend. Uh, we're gonna interview our friend Rob David, who's been working on. He works at Mattel, but he's been working on the DC comics, like the Eternity, Eternity War and stuff like that. So we're gonna go interview him on stage at PowerCon. Sunday? Have, have you, Sunday. Sunday at 1.30, I think, or yeah, 12.30? Yeah. I'm going to just show up at your house, and you drive. Yes. Um, and we'll be there when we get there. Are you ready to deep dive into He-Man? Uh, I, I, my, my knowledge of He-Man is glancing at best. Right. So there's going to be a lot of, hey, Kev, you should ask him a question now. I'm like, you know the way I'm like a closet Whitney Houstonologist? <laughs> <laughs> like, I got that for Masters of the Universe as well. Oh, so shit. I'll be able to fucking ask a bunch of questions. Okay, good, but good. if you, I don't know what it is to get tickets and stuff like that, but if anybody's interested, uh, we'll be re recording it, of course, and I believe shooting it. But if you're interested near, anywhere near Anaheim, uh, come on down to see, uh, see us on Power Count Sunday at, uh, fuck, is it 1230? I think it's 130. Are you sure? No. 
I think it's 12.30. Go to a website. Obviously, yeah. we're undependable and shit. <laughs> but um, we'll be there to do some chat. Unreliable narrators. Um, other than that, that's been... Oh, other housekeeping. Um, JC's not here. Uh, Jamie, it's Shan's birthday today? So Jamie, uh, Cat Ears comes to like every fucking show and practically drags Shannon to every show. And today is Shannon's birthday? How old are you, Shannon? 12, 20, 22? What is the Haunted Mansion? You, this is the big 5-0? Give it up for Shannon. He hit 50 today, man. I told him he doesn't look a day over 60. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fucking A, man. You're spending your birthday here. The day oh, not after. Really. Oh, yesterday was your birthday? Fuck you, man. Like, fuck it. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome to fucking to, to, I was welcoming you to 50. I'm not there yet. Yeah. You get to welcome me. I'll be there to hear it. Shit. Welcome to the back half. Yes. Is that what they call it? They can now. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mark Bernard right here, man. He uh, used to be a news hound for a living. So on this here show, we charge Mark with the duty of going to the internet, collecting all the shit we're going to talk about this week. Presenting it as news of our own. Give it up for Mark. He found the news. I found some news. Uh, I apologize. I'm so fucking bakey tonight. I never really get like bakey. I'm always like pretty crisp. Oh and no, shit. you get bakey. Yeah, but <laughs> like, tonight I'm really like fucking struggling to put shit together. I I didn't know it was possible at my age to smoke too much, but I did. <laughs> I'm more watching the show than participating. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. It's a weird sensation. Welcome to a whole new world. <laughs> <laughs> what news you got, man? Uh, we, we, we all watched the Game of Thrones, right? Fuck yeah. Love, hate, ambivalent. We loved most of it. We and then at the end, we were it. like, man. And then it did some shit towards the, the back yeah. half and a half. Yeah. Um, those two guys, uh, Benioff and Weiss, who ran that show and, and who sort of steered the ship, mostly great, um, they, uh, they wrapped up their time at HBO and were kind of like shopping themselves around Hollywood. And they were supposed to do a show for HBO after Game of Thrones, right, called Confederate? They See, were. Confederate, Confederate or something like that? About a world like what happens if the South won or some such right. shit. Right. Which it turned out the world didn't want. Yeah, like the world reacted <laughs> very poorly to yeah. that announcement. But then it was like, well, hey, man, fuck it. They're doing Star Wars anyway. Like they were doing their own Star Wars trilogy. trilogy. They got a trilogy because they were handing out trilogies to everybody but us. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck them, man. You get one and you get like Oprah in cars. They were just fucking flinging trilogies into the crowd. Um, if they don't give you your own trilogy, just make your own. That's what I say. Fair enough. But um, I would have taken one of theirs as well. Uh, so wait a second. Yes. Finish the thought, and then I'll jump in. Okay. Uh, so we had been talking a couple of weeks ago about this like arms race for giant producers. Like yes. Shonda Rhimes and Ryan Murphy ended up in Netflix. And yes. Massive million dollar deals, and these guys naturally HBO was like, oh my god, fucking stay yeah, so here, just lock them down. Like, why yeah. would we not want to do that? You can have all the money you want totally. for HBO. Um, you know who has more money? Netflix. Really? Yeah. So Netflix said? Netflix said, how would you like to come here and do whatever the fuck you want to do for as long as you want to do it? And we'll pay you the GDP of like a couple of small countries. And they said, sure. Really? Nine figure deal these guys signed to go. And there's like no decimals in that nine figures, only commas. Like, I also got a nine figure deal at Burger King if you just kept rounding down. <laughs> What is, wait a second, six figure be like 100,000, seven yes. figure be a million, a million, eight figure be tens, of, tens millions. of millions, nine figures is hundreds of millions. I mean, what is that for? That is, <laughs> what do you get for that much money? You get them eternal make, life? Pretty much. You get firstborns and secondborns if you want them. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they will now exclusively make television shows for Netflix. And the presumption is like, man, if you can make Game of Thrones work, you'll make everything magic. You've got to have another one in you. Just like... They're well, like, we do. Hold on. Hey, George R.R. R. Martin, do you have another one in you? <laughs> Could you write some more books, please? Fuck. <laughs> but, like, got any more of that sweet dragon shit? <laughs> <laughs> but that happens all the time in Hollywood. So wait, what happens to the Star Wars movies? That's still safe. This is a TV deal. 
So they got a deal with Netflix and a deal with Disney? Yep. Wow, man. They got a foot in both worlds and Uh shit. They got paid twice. Um, But yeah, Warner Brothers used to do that a lot. Like they they wanted to be in the Wachowskis business so bad Mm -hmm. because like, hey, we made The Matrix, which made a gazillion fucking dollars. You know what? We'll do everything else you guys want to do in the hopes that another one of these will be The Matrix. And then you get like Jupiter Ascending. (laughs) Is that what it was called? Yeah. Jupiter Ascending? Ascending. Dude! <laughs> it wasn't bad. He's... It, he's... Okay. No. Don't let him talk you out of it, man. Now, listen. You love what uh, you, you love. keep fucking advocating for Jupiter Ascending, man. That's the yoga hosers of Wachowski Brother movies. <laughs> Needs the fucking love, man. Uh, Mila Kunis as a fucking... <laughs> Toilet cleaning empress from outer space. Yeah. Like the bees all seem to love, and like Channing Tatum is like a dog boy. He rides a skateboard, but he's also like the baddest bounty hunter in the galaxy. And I don't know. Hey, you're right. It's not bad. It's not good. <laughs> but it's not it's bad. It's very inventive. It is super interesting. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's breathtaking. Um, but they also did Speed Racer, which is like gorgeous. Fucking I movies, fucking right? love Speed Racer. Yeah. I can't say that that's good either, but I also don't care. It's daring, and it's, it, and it's beautiful to look at. The end of that movie makes me tear up every time mm. because it's just it's a heroic, it's the mythic journey of this guy who finally discovers, here's what I'm supposed to be, here's what I'm supposed to do, and I'm the best in the world at it. And watching that stuff, like it's, it's gorgeous. There's a monkey in the trunk, which I am like, not on board with like monkeys and trunks and shit, just mm-hmm. generally. <laughs> Like, monkeys and trunks tend to ruin most things that you put monkeys and or trunks in. True. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so this is Netflix banking on Weiss and Benioff to be able to create another Game of Thrones for them. So with all that money, when, when they say something like that, like, what, 100 million, 200 million, what is it? It's, they, they're being very unspecific. Let's say about it's 100 million bucks. Sure. Is that, how long is that for? Uh, a couple of years, two, three, four years. Does that mean like here's a hundred million, you got to pay people out of this, or they just get to keep the hundred million for themselves? They get, they get their company, whatever yeah. that company is, will come there, and from that X number of hundreds of million dollars, they then have to run the company. But that is not the budget for any of the shows that they create. That is still above and beyond. That's separate money. To so like, oh, you want to make fucking I don't know, Game of Bones, great. We will then cut you a check for the $100 million you need to make a season of Game of Bones. So Above then, and beyond the $300 million we gave you to just put an office in here. Oh. Uh, yeah. That's your understanding of these things? Yeah. I really failed in my professional life. <laughs> I, I just thought it was always like, you know, it's a $100 million deal and out of that, like, you got to pay for the movie and the fucking whatever and the overhead and whatever's left. If you want to keep it, go ahead. We'll look the other way. Yeah, no. They gave them hundreds of millions of dollars just to walk across the fucking street? On the hopes that they will make them billions. They spent hundreds of millions. I'm such an asshole. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. There's still time. And there's was- weed. It's true. I always thought I was doing well in life and shit, but those guys cracked the code. Wow, that's crazy money. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, HBO not mad or anything? Anybody check on HBO? But they're like, (laughs) (laughs) Like, hey, girl, you all right? (laughs) They were doing like fucking, uh, what was his name? Joffrey's little brother just stepped up on the fucking ledge and went off. (laughs) Welp. Um, did they, uh, was it tough to lose them or maybe cheap to lose them? Maybe that frees up a lot of cash and shit. It, it probably does. And I think that honestly, Now's the time for us to go into fucking HBO with crazy ideas and shit. We only need tens of millions. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Bargain basement. You like dragons? Drag on this. <laughs> Can we have a show? <laughs> Please give me a show. I mean, it is kind of like the time, like, you know, HBO Max now is... Mm-hmm. Not just going to be HBO, but like, you know, it's their all encompassing app. Sounds Did like we talk time. about how that's the worst name for anything I've ever heard ever? You don't like HBO Max? That is like the first idea theater of a bunch of like 60 year old white guys. Who are like, what do we call it? HBO. Kids seem like HBO, but more. Can we call it HBO more? No, 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 no. Wait, I got it. HBO Plus. Fuck. No, Disney just got Plus. Okay, hold on. HBO Max. You're, yeah. you're describing it like it's the poochie of streamers. 
<laughs> it's the poochy name of streamers, <laughs> to be certain. Um, yeah, at least they didn't call it HBO to the max. I think it's misleading because it has HBO in the title, and it's yeah. like, well, it like encompasses. How do, we, how do we dilute the awesome brand that we have over here, which seemed to mean like selective and curated? Yeah. No, no, it's going to be everything and also more. Yeah. But I also feel like, aside from like whatever it does to HBO, it's just, how do you know that it's the Warner Brothers app unless they call it the Warner Brothers app? Like, why wouldn't you call it Bugs? You know what I'm saying? Mm. In honor of fucking Bugs Bunny. You gotta call the app something. Motherfuckers invented something called it Hulu. <laughs> and now we all say yes mm -hmm. and shit. So why not just fucking call it Bugs? They're like, it's got everything. The icon is a little picture of Bugs Bunny. I know I'm not getting a lot of support here, but fuck all y'all, no, hey, man. Listen, <laughs> these, these are also the people that when they launched their own network, they were like, you know who the mascot is? Yeah. The frog That's from true. that one episode that people love, but nobody remembers. That's true. That was a big part of our childhood. Yeah. Dobber, 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 you big. <laughs> Michigan J Frog. Yeah. Um, all, right. all right. So that's it for Benioff and Weiss. They that's, got all the money in the world. They got all shit. the money and they're just going to cry themselves to sleep in fistful of thousand dollar bills. I imagine this means we're going to be getting great entertainment and shit. Knock on wood, I hope so. You know who has plans to give us great entertainment? Miller and Lord. The we guy. love them. We do love them. Miller and Lord are the geniuses behind Spider Man into the Spider Verse as well as. Um, movies that I fucking like can't believe how much I wound up liking those 21 Jump Street movies. Yeah. Um, and what else did they do? They did something else that I love. The Lego the movie. Fuck, how could I forget? And Clyde with a Chance of Meatballs, which is also really Whatever. Good. The fucking, uh, no, I'm, that's very sweet. But the Lego movie is like one of the most brilliant things ever fucking made. It is. Lego Movie 2 is enjoyable, but it doesn't come close. No. And that's not like, you know, I'm shitting on it. You know, I don't even know why I tagged that in. But, like, fuck, that Lego Movie's amazing. Uh, God, so they are happy. developing a suite of TV shows based on Spider-Man for Sony. For, all right, wait. Say that again. Live this. action TV shows. TV shows? TV shows set in the Spider-Man universe because Sony has the rights to Spider-Man still, even though Marvel shares them. Yeah. Um, Sony is the one who actually makes the Spider-Man movies. And so they now have the rights to Spider-Man and the 900 some odd characters that come along with Spider-Man. They have had that for a long time. They have that for a long so time. So wait, they're gonna do live action shows? Yep. For whom? For Sony. I mean, does Sony have a network? Uh, no, they'll sell it elsewhere. So it's Sony is producing it. won't be on it. Crackle, dude. Nothing will be on Crackle. Um, they're producing, Sony's making it, they're the studio, and somebody will, else will be airing it. Right. And what are, what are the ideas here? Did they say? They won't say. All they say is, we are developing a handful of live action shows using Sony's Marvel characters, of which there are like 900 of them. We're figuring out a way to develop the show so that each are their own unique experience, but are also related. Um, blah, 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 blah. We've been talking to a lot of potential teammates for trying to do something not like anything else has been done on TV. It'll be a little while before it all comes together and is on the air, but I think it is going to be something really special. Blah, 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 blah. They also signed a nine-figure deal, nine deal at Sony Pictures Television. That really? That lets them do whatever they want on TV. What does this say right there about Netflix? Um, hopefully we'll know in the next few months where it'll be and what the schedule would be, was all Miller would say when asked whether the eventual destination would be Netflix. I mean, those dudes in charge is a good thing. Um, I don't know if more Spider-Man's a good thing. I, I mean, look, I'll always take more Spider-Man. I just don't know if there's a hunger for it. But um, I'm, I'm on board. I think everything they did with the character, the characters was fantastic. Or spectacular, I should say. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. Like, and and I, I have faith in those guys. Me that, too. That they won't dilute it by doing too much of it unless it makes sense in however they're going to plan it. But it's weird, it sounds like now they'll be, I mean, it's all Marvel, right? But it's not Marvel Studios, this right. side of it. I mean, Marvel will have some consultation, but it's not a Marvel Jamie Jam. Right, not a Kevin Feige thing. No. But neither was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. No. So technically, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah, that was an Amy Pascal And if anybody could fucking figure it out, Lord Miller, man, they did a fantastic job with that movie. Oh my God, that movie's so fucking good. Yeah, that's remember, the one like, that- Remember when, at one point, they got into a movie, some version of a Spider-Man who said, thwip it out. <laughs> thwip and release. Yeah, yeah, thwip. but it was like, thwip it out, man. Like, oh my God, when I heard that, I'm like, we're in a fucking brave new world. <laughs> 
Um, what's next? Uh, did you watch any of the G.I. Joe movies? G.I. Joe, The Rise of I Cobra. have vague memories of Joseph Gordon-Levitt screeching and shit. <laughs> like, wow, when he was Cobra Commander. Yeah. They made two movies, G.I. Joe. And Bruce Willis was in another one, one of them, right? He yeah. was Joe himself. He was Joe himself. Um, and The Rock was in the second one, and Channing Tatum was for like half an hour. Um, yeah. They made two movies, which did relatively well. They made something like $600 million worldwide, both of them. Then combined. there was talk that they were going to cross them over. With Transformers. Yeah. Which they never did. Um, but they are making a Snake Eyes movie. That makes sense. Yeah, for reals. And then they're spinning it off into a fourth movie that they're not saying yet what it is. But I, I personally don't know if I need more G.I. Joe. I was just testing your read. I think, um, are they, it's, is it going to be silent the whole time? Because I'd like to audition. <laughs> um, Listen, man, I'm dropping the weight. Fuck it, I could be your snake eyes. Is this, uh, is this, are they going to tell some story about this is why he doesn't talk? Yeah, it's going to be like the origin of Snake Eyes. So he'll, he will talk and then... And then won't anymore. At some point, somebody will take yeah. his tongue. And, and also, like, it'll have ninjas, which are always cool. Right. You know. Also keeps the brand alive. How did Hobbs and Shaw do for the Fast and Furious brand? Well, I mean, it did really well. It's something in, like, $340 million domestic, something like $600 million worldwide in, like, Jesus. week two or whatever it is. Um... It's not the highest grossing of the Fast and the Furious movies, but it's doing pretty fucking well. Right. Um, now the next one will be a traditional Fast and the Furious? Yeah, they're doing Fast 9, I think, right now. And then you'll get like a Hobbs 2 show. How old are those car-stealing kids, man? Like, when we started this journey, it seemed to be a long time ago. Yeah, no, Vin Diesel was like young and buff and like his skin was good. And... Uh, and now he's like 52 he's years 52 old. He's 52 years old? <laughs> I mean, if he looks great, I wish I looked like fucking that at 49, but like, fast? <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody at 52 is really that fast. No, anymore. but you know, as long wow, as... Wow, I didn't know that. Fuck, we're all old, man. We really are. But as long as you keep hashtag family alive... You can keep going for a while. <laughs> uh, this, this is my favorite thing of the week, I think, that I saw. Okay. A trailer dropped, I want to say it was yesterday, on the 20th anniversary of Bowfinger, which, if you've never seen Bowfinger, is maybe the greatest movie about the making of movies mm -hmm. and the love and the joy. And, and the, Outsiders making a movie. And Outsiders making the movies. Um, directed by Frank Oz, starring Steve Martin and Eddie Murphy. On the 20th anniversary of that movie, Dolomite is my name trailer dropped, starring Eddie Murphy, which, holy fucking shit. If you haven't seen this trailer yet, my God, take a peek at it, man. It's coming on Netflix, so if you got Netflix, you get to watch it for free and shit. Eddie Murphy uh, playing Rudy Ray Moore. Yes. Um, it, the, and it's directed by Craig Brewer. Yeah. With a script by Scott and Larry, the guys mm -hmm. that, uh, I know they did shit recently, but I always think of them as the People versus Larry Flint. Yeah, and Man the, on the Moon. And the, the Man on the Moon and the, the what is the, Ed, Ed Wood. Wood. Ed Wood guys. But what have they done recently? Uh, the, the, I can't remember, they did a TV People show. People versus Larry OJ. Yeah, People versus OJ. That was them. Was their big jam. And then something else. But this looks Absolutely fucking phenomenal. Yeah, because Rudy Ray Moore, if you don't know, was like a failed stand-up comedian in the 70s, in the early 70s, who wanted to somehow make a career for himself, and so decides, well, like, I'm going to go see Shaft, and I, why can't I be that guy? It's like, because you're fat, and you're not funny, and you don't have any talent. He's like, well, fuck it, I'm going to make my own movie where I'm the star of this movie, I'm going to know Kung Fu, and I'm going to be cool, and I'm going to do all... And he made the movie on a fucking shoestring, like, by himself, and just improved and willed his way to becoming a movie star. And they made his like, version of Shaft, essentially. Totally. He created his own character and turned Dolomite. him into a Dolomite. Um, and so this is the making of that for, it's the Rudy Ray Moore story starring Eddie Murphy. Which again, like having Scott and Larry write it makes sense because it does share DNA with mm -hmm. Ed Wood. Yeah. It is about, and then they, they're so good at doing Outsiders, um, but it's about people who want to do something that like I, I love shit like this because it's literally my life story every time so they do an outsiders movie I'm like I was fucking there and shit um, when I watched the trailer I 
it's wrong to say like, I fell in love with Eddie Murphy again because I've never fallen out of love with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. But I was so fucking delighted to see Eddie Murphy like working. Like it's, I, I hope it leads to him maybe hosting Saturday Night Live for the first Ooh. time. Um, and it's uh, not just him working, it's him being funny. And really working, like fucking working all of his chops. He's fucking gifted, insanely gifted, yeah. man. And like watching him in that trailer, you're like, fuck yes, that's the one I want to see. Like I was trying to explain to somebody who was a youth today who couldn't quite understand why it means so much because Eddie Murphy was the funniest man on the planet and walked away from stand-up comedy when nobody was bigger at stand-up comedy than he was. Like he... It was a couple of albums, and then Eddie Murphy Delirious, and Eddie Murphy Raw, which played in fucking theaters and like made something like 70, 80 million dollars in like 19... The late 80s. 89 money, which for a stand-up movie is ridiculous, and then just didn't do comedy anymore. Like he was funny in movies, and he would be, and he's fucking Eddie Murphy, and like wickedly talented. But I can't imagine, that's like Jimi Hendrix being like, you know what, I just want to sing now. Which Eddie thing. Murphy did at a certain point. That, Eddie Murphy was just like, I just want to That girl wants to party all the time. Yeah. Not that girl. My girl <laughs> wants to party all the time. Produced by Rick James, who you can hear, party all the time. That's right. He's back up. <laughs> he's back up. <laughs> but yeah, just to see him like a live wire again is so fucking nice. Um, it, uh, it looks it, it really um, engaging as fuck. Craig Brewer did... Hustle and flow. <laughs> as well as Black Snake Moan, mm -hmm. which I fucking loved. And didn't he do a Tarzan or something like that? He, maybe, no, he was working on it, but didn't do it. Mm. Footloose. He did the Footloose remake. That's right. So weird I conflate those two in my head. <laughs> Tarzan and Footloose, same fucking movie. Um, <laughs> but he's doing, he's, he directed this. Yeah. Isn't he directing something else with Eddie Murphy? Coming to America too. He's directing that? Yes. <laughs> and they got the whole fucking cast to come back for Coming to America too. So like Arsenio Hall is back as his best friend. James Earl Jones is back. Paul Bates is back as his number two. She's your queen. Oh my God, really? Yeah, that fucking guy. Like John Amos just signed on. Oh shit. Yes. Um, fucking Sherry Headley who played uh, yeah, Lisa she, yeah, yeah. signed on. Everybody's fucking back. That is I, fantastic. And I said, who else? West, Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. But Wesley Snipes is also in uh, Dolomite. Dolomite. Yeah. So I guess Just keep, keep everyone working. had a great time. Keep working, Wesley. Keep those taxes paid, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Leslie Jones is in it in some un, like it's secret role. Um, um, when is it coming out? I know they're just next, making it now. Next December. They start oh. shooting like in a couple of weeks. I remember the first one did come out in December too. Well, did it? It was a Christmas movie if I remember correctly. Wow. Um, wow, man. I can't fucking wait. That jumped to the top of the list. Sounds like they're doing deep cuts continuity, man. Fuck. That's cool. That's wow. very fucking cool. Yes. It makes me happy as hell. Like, I, I cannot wait for the, the, uh, the James Earl Jones Assants where it's like, listen, man, it's not dead yet. Keep fucking working, James. Because <laughs> I'm, af I'm afraid for him. He's like in his 80s. I mean, what a big year for him, man. He's, he's Lion King. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess this is next year. But still. Yeah. You know. Hopefully. What a big life for him, man. Holy shit. Remember for a long period of time, like, you know, he's always, remember he feel the dreams and shit. Mm -hmm. He's always consistently active. But remember for a long fucking time, like the big gig where you heard him all the time was, this is CNN. Like, <laughs> he made more money off of that than everything else in his career combined. Is that true? Yeah. How do you know that? I've read an interview with him. It's like, they paid me like every time that runs, he gets paid. And Are like, you shitting that me? is still the signal identification for CNN. It's like Eddie Van Halen made more money doing the guitar solo for Beat It than every other Van Halen album combined. Because it just sold Because like it's crazy. fucking thriller. Because it's like, oh yeah, I get paid every time that fuck, and it sold more albums than any other album on the face of the planet. Wow. This is like, this is CNN. Like, put all of my kids through school. It means I don't have to give a fuck about anything ever again. Like, I don't want to show up. I'm not showing up. Fuck you. I'm CNN, bitch. <laughs> how many, how many, do you, I mean, like, do you think they even gave him direction in which to go with it? <laughs> or do you think they were like, any way he says it is going to sound cool. It's going to sound like Darth Vader. So fucking, like, let's let him say it however he, 
says it, and he picked, because you could go, he goes, this is CNN. You could go, this is CNN. This is CNN. I would like to see, like, the reel of outtakes. <laughs> it's like, this is... Line! <laughs> Fuck. CNN. <laughs> Get it right, we'll make you a billionaire. <laughs> you got it, boss! Um, that's, that, uh, yeah, man, I, I can't wait to fucking see that movie. That movie sounds great. But fucking Dolomite, when do we get to see Dolomite? Soon? Um, I think it's soon. I think it's in the next month or so. I like the, I mean, fucking, I hope. Good for Netflix, because who is going to make that movie in this day and age? You know what I'm yeah. saying? But, like, when you see that trailer, you're like, how could they have not made that movie up until this moment in time? I thought it was a legit theatrical release. Like, yeah. I didn't, until it got to the end, like, fucking Netflix, okay, yeah. but... Why is this not in movies? Even Netflix will put it in movies. Who the fuck knows? I think that's how they roll, right? They own, don't, didn't they buy the Egyptians so they can mm -hmm. put, you know, because there was some rule about you have to have movies playing a movie theater in order to yeah. qualify for an Oscar. And they were like, all right. And they bought a movie theater. <laughs> we, we got this. It's yeah, fucking the way to do it. Man. That was their Roma play. It was like, oh, no, we're getting all the Oscars. How do we qualify? Done. Um, what else you got? That is all I got. Man. Are you shitting me? It's a slow news week, huh? We talked for an hour, dude. <laughs> Time flies, man. Give it up for Mark. He brought you the news. I just I keep thinking of that line from Superman where the pilot is uh, is looking out when the when you know the wing on the fucking engine in the wing is like, what do we got? I don't know. We got something. Just fly. <laughs> I don't know. Just fly. That's tonight. We're just flying. We're man. just flying. I had a, before we dive into anything else, I had a fucking, have you ever had powdered peanut butter? Yeah, only at your house. Because you gave me those Bamba fucking things. Yeah. Yeah. But those are like, but that's not even powdered. I'm talking about like, they make powdered peanut butter where it's like just literally peanut powder. And if you want, you could add water to it and it would turn into like some sort of peanutty sauce thing. People put it on the top of like, Energy drinks and shit like that. Is that an attack method? Like you're throwing fucking powdered peanut butter motherfuckers and just gum up their face? You totally could, because it happened to me today, man. I was fucking in my car driving, and I had a can of this shit, and I was like, this is a perfect blast of fucking protein. And so I opened it up and took a mouthful, and it's literally like taking a mouthful of flour. So instantly you're like, <gasps> all the moisture just sucks out of your mouth. But it's not unpleasurable because you're like, oh, peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> then you got to grab a drink and fucking quick down it and shit like that. But uh, I was doing it in fucking traffic and I uh, had to do a quick stop short and poof, it like what fucked down me. And the person to my left saw it and was like. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. Eh. Um, all right. Uh, I don't even know why I told that story, but. The, uh, this part of the show, ladies and gentlemen, is, uh, are we signing it? Because it, it well, says for you both to sign for me. Oh, I'm glad you read the instructions. Um, also, before we go further, man, what I saw this online. Who brought us the Howard the Doc thing? Yeah? Jump up to the wall, man. Let, let's find out what this is about. Um, the Howard the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm working on a show with Marvel. Uh, uh, Howard the Duck animated series uh, for Hulu. Um, so I saw this online, I guess a couple days ago or something like that. And I thought the it was number one, cute, clever, fucking title. Number Thank two, you. great fucking idea. Who are you? Uh, my name's Ernie Trinidad, uh, independent filmmaker. Okay, all right, give it up for him, man. He's one of us. <laughs> and what's the idea? The, is the idea is you're doing a documentary about? Howard the Duck, the movie? Yes. Um, I'm sure many people here probably are in the camp that think Howard the Duck is trash, one of the worst movies ever. But there are people, and I've met, I've interviewed a number of people already who have a genuine like for this movie that people say, there is no reason why you should like this piece of crap. Right. And I basically thought that last year, last July, I was thinking, Everybody is making crowd-funded documentaries about their favorite franchises. Police Academy, Fright Night, Hellraiser, Nightmare on Elm Street, you name it. And I'm like, how come no one's ever done Howard the Duck? And I just got quiet, went online, did my research, 
And right then and there, I said, we're doing this. A year later, we started filming. So Fucking just... A. Give it up for Art right there, man. Um, so what, uh, what difficulties have you encountered thus far? Um, the biggest difficulty is our crowdfunding campaign crashed and burned as bad as the movie we're honoring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get out of here. Which I find totally ironic and totally embraced because I just totally like thinking, okay, this is, we want to do this. We're not getting the funding for it. Fuck it, we're doing it. So it's like total guerrilla style independent filmmaking, just reaching out to whoever we can get, whoever we can get, great. If, and we'll just keep pursuing and pursuing and filming, keep filming until we get everybody we feel we need to make a proper documentary to show people that, especially in this day and age where everybody's like, they hate this, they hate that, they hate that. You don't like what you like. It, if people says you suck because you like that, it's like, who cares what they think? It's what you think, what you feel inside. If Howard the Duck makes you feel good, and I've met people they were actually like one person we interviewed actually said she had a crush on Howard the Duck when she was a kid. So that's I did a not documentary judge, I I that like, I would okay. like to see, man. Fuck a duck. Yeah, so, so that yeah. happened in the movie. <laughs> so totally open. I'm just reaching out to whomever, and I saw you were here. I'm like thinking, hey, I was going to try and reach you at Comic Con, but it's like it's going to be just too hectic. This is definitely so, the place to do it. Uh, How can anyone at home or whatever help? Um, basically, I actually have a. Um, I already forgot what the, uh, the crowdfunding is. A, not Indiegogo, that's the one that blew it. A GoFundMe. <laughs> a GoFundMe. We have a GoFundMe going um, for our traveling budget. Not, to, not asking people, it's like, hey, send me here, send me there. But our problem is I, I'm funding this out of pocket, doing what I can. But our travel budget is to allow us to go wherever we need to go to get these interviews. Right. So we got Chip Zdarsky. He was totally behind it. He wants to do it. Chip. Chip. But he's a Chip, uh, he's the guy who's uh, the, the redefined Howard the Duck. And yes. been the most recent has done an incredible job over at Marvel. So he would be a great get. Yes, and he's, he's totally game. He wants to do it. He's like, but he's like, I'm in Toronto. I'm like, eh, we'll figure it out. And I have a couple people. I'm meeting with Samantha Gerber, uh, Steve Gerber's daughter. Right. And I got to go to uh, Sacramento for that. So that's more traveling that comes out of pocket. So... I'm starting that campaign not to fund the movie. I just, we need just a traveling budget just to go get these interviews for the people, to give these people, the audience, someone to listen to that they would actually like to hear. They don't want to hear about from people like so and so from Comic Con. They want to, I want to, and they want to hear from actual people involved in the industry and also people who actually worked in making the movie and, and just any general folk who actually show that they're fans of the film, which is why I wanted to. You guys are like great. Like, obviously, Kevin is doing the Howard the Duck the animated series next year. It's like that would be. I would definitely got to reach out to him to see if he's available to do it. Who's, uh, your, who's your white whale? My white whale. Yeah. Who's who's? Um, your, if you're gonna be Ahab on this crazy mission, who's Tim Robbins. The? There's Ed Gale, who I did interview. Says there's no way in hell you're gonna get Tim. <laughs> Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. He apparently he does not like to talk about Howard the Duck. <laughs> is that right? That, that straight from Ed Gale, he said, you're never going to get Tim Robbins. He does not like him to talk about it. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would imagine, like, the white whale is George Lucas. Yeah. I got to know. Because if anybody doesn't want to talk about it, I imagine <laughs> it's him. I got a, well, I didn't get a no from Lucas himself. I got a no from uh, Skywalker Ranch Publicity. So it's like, he's busy doing his, his philanthropic work for his museum and whatnot. I'm like, all right. Read well. between the lines. That says, duck, no. <laughs> <laughs> but he's opening a museum in LA, so I say duck yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there you go. Um, all right, man, well, arrange it through the bar. Hit uh, uh, um, these cats. I'll happily come here and we can do an interview. Awesome. If awesome. That helps. Love you to don't have to, are you from the area and stuff? Hey, great, thank you. Are you from the area? Oh, yes, I'm in, I'm in the so area. So, boom, we've just saved travel cost right there. Sweet. Um, and sometimes it helps you get one interview, a bunch of trickle down and stuff like that. So that's easy as fuck to do, man. And you know why? Because it's a fucking great title. Howard the Doc. That deserves to be real. Give it up for Ernie, man. Howard the Doc. And Mark as well. Yeah, he gets it too. <clears throat> okay. We've come to the Q&A portion of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. That's part of the show where uh, we open uh, the floor up to you folks, the audience, and uh, ask, uh, we answer questions 
that you guys uh, are, are uh, we answer questions you guys are asking. Fuck, I'm so big. Um, we're getting it done, man. Yeah, man, we're going to talk is what I'm getting at. Um, and JC is not here, of course, as we previously mentioned. Um, so Nate and Andrew have found us. Thank you. Uh, some folks to ask, question, uh, ask questions. And there's one already. What's your name, sir? So my name's not important, but I am the Wizard of Menlo. I actually messaged both of you, or rather added you on Hold Twitter. on one second. There's a way we do things. What's right. your name, man? Wizard of Menlo. Wizard. Everyone give it up for the Wizard of Menlo. Yeah. You dove right the fuck into it, man. <laughs> you went right for my clit. You got to kiss me first. <laughs> Okay. Maybe rub a nipple or something like that, okay. but you're like, Wizard of Metal! Yeah. Like, ah, 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 ah. I like we'll get play. there. I'll do the foreplay. Fair enough. Um, Who are you, man? What's going on? So, I mean, I've been watching you since far too young. Like, before, like 10 years old, Dogma, um, Jane Silent Bob, Strike Back. So I'm very excited for the reboot. I've seen all of Thank the behind you. the scenes. I've watched the trailer, all that shit. Um, Castle Rock? Sure, man. Yeah, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 episode six, fucking fantastic, voice of God, all that shit. It was really good. Thank Best you. episode in the season. Haven't actually watched the last episode yet because I don't like finishing stuff. Um, <laughs> Wait, what, in general? In general. So yeah. you love Game of Thrones. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking best uh, fucking series finisher. Um, <laughs> no. Um, uh, question yes. is... What is the dumbest and smartest thing you've done while high? And I'm talking cloud nine, cloud 10. You, what's the dumbest, smartest thing you've done while very drunk? And I'm talking verge of blackout. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Verge of blackout. Hold on. First off, uh, we, we fucking went so fast. Oh, uh, right. Uh, tickets. I forgot yeah. to talk about the prizes. Um, <laughs> generally, we ask people to ask really good questions and shit, and if they do, um, they win a prize. Number one, that's a great question, so you're definitely winning a fucking prize. Thank you. The prize this week, of course, as always, is our good friend Deacon, who works over at the 40X company, uh, gave, uh, gave us tickets. Uh, three rounds of tickets, three to two apiece, yep. uh, to go see a movie at the 40X Theater. They got one here at LA Live. Um, it is an incredible experience to see a movie in 40X. Um, it, it, what is the movie? What, Hobbs and Shaw? Hobbs and the Shaw. Like, if you got a kidney stone that you don't want anymore, <laughs> go see Hobbs and Shaw in a 40X theater because it will work that shit right out. Because the seat's moving around. The seats and are stuff. moving. Every time somebody gets shot, there's like, it, like a shoot. Like it'll <laughs> Have you guys done yeah. the D box in like Cinemark? It's, no. I think, comparable, at least in terms of the scene. I've been to a D-Box. It's yeah. close, but this is unreal. The 40X right. goes way beyond it, man. D-Box sounds dirty. I know. D-Box sounds like, a, like you're making fun of somebody. You fucking D-Box. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, this is like Universal Studios, like the... the, the that's the, their version of right. it? Right. Yeah. This, yeah. These cats, 40X, all... Well, this one's at Regal, it says. Is that what the LA Live mm -hmm. thing is? Um, you got to go, if you haven't seen a movie in 40X... Go see it. We talk about it all the time, man. Uh, it's a fantastic experience. So who, you're going to get a pair of tickets. You're also going to get this beautiful signed uh, print by uh, our good friend Nate Gonzalez, man. Give it up for yeah. Nate. He does the show art. <laughs> Nate be selling these after the show as well, so you can buy them if you're not lucky enough to win one of these. So we give you that. We give you that. Uh, you're also going to get, I got hats. From caviar, that's the weed I smoke. I will take and, one. Uh, I can't wear it, obviously. But, right, we can take uh, it, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't want to fuck that fro up. No, no that's yeah. classic. <laughs> and then you'll also walk away with uh, a signed copy of uh, Hit Girl in Hollywood, which is a mini series I did yeah. for uh, Mark Miller and I did with Perneal, um, who's been here on the show. So big. Fucking that's it? booty I didn't to get win. Anything else? I, mean, I know, really. Fucking my. Let me <laughs> hold on. And I've got twenty bucks. <laughs> um, all right. So ba back to the question. The dumbest, the best, and worst things. Or yes, you've done well. Very, very high and blackout. But well, verge of blackout because you obviously. Do you know remember. yours? I know the dumbest thing. So let's. All right. All well, right. Let's go. Dumb, smart, dumb. Or uh, smart, also, dumb you can start with dumbest. Go ahead. All right. I I want. Okay, statute of limitations is probably on my side. <laughs> um, I was graduating from high school, uh, so I was, I was a little younger than 21. Illegal okay. drinking, underage, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, we were, the, the high school I was graduating from 
we were graduating on like the main field that we had, where it was like, oh, here's the baseball diamonds, here's the football field, here's the track, here's mm. all that shit. And, uh, and so I drove my car around the bases. I assume yeah. at night, very late. It was late at night, yeah. but like I drove my car around the bases and like slid into home. <laughs> <laughs> well, what car? What was this? This was a 1987 Plymouth Gran Turismo, which they don't make anymore. Uh, it had a spoiler on the back, which led the, oh. gave the impression flames? of speed. Any no, flames? No flames. Oh, okay. it, you know, it's not wood paneling because it right. also was like, we made a car out of wood. Don't you want one? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I drove around the bases and like fucked that up good and then drove through what was eventually going to be like the graduation where they set up the <laughs> chairs and shit. And so like I just tore up that fucking lawn and then like got up the rise and like back onto the street and then saw like sirens in the background. <laughs> clearly somebody heard and saw me fucking up their uh, graduation field. This would have been a <laughs> New York. <laughs> but uh, and then the next day, I get to go to that field and sit on that in those fucking chairs and just listen to the room. What the fuck happened to you last night? <laughs> I don't know. Twister, I guess. Uh, yeah, that's the dumbest thing that I've done while uh, under the influence. The smartest thing I've ever done while high is Tusk. That's why I'm here, actually. Hands down. Though you'll find a bunch of people out there to be like, no, he's wrong. But I, I honestly feel that. I love that movie. And it came from being stoned. I've seen it full two times. And I've watched it several times more. Uh, but uh, can I, thank God it wasn't a series. You wouldn't know what happens at the <laughs> end. Exactly. So no. <laughs> You'd be like, I hope he gets out. <laughs> yeah. If only there was a detective who could help. I know. Yeah. Um, that, so that was the smartest thing I've ever done. Um, I, I like, I was struggling to come up with the dumbest thing I've ever done high, but I've never done anything dumb while high. I have done dumb things while drunk. Um, you've been drunk before? I have. I, you know, I, I'm not gonna say I used to drink, but when I was in high school, that was the option and I hated it. I liked, uh, you who better than fucking liquor. Like sugar was my fucking thing. So uh. when we all got into the mandatory junior, senior age of fucking like, we're gonna fucking party, man. Like I was still stuck in like, wait, Friday night, that's when we make crank phone calls and shit and order pizzas and send them to people's houses and shit. And now there was this weird forced socialization down at like Snake Lake where somebody had a fucking Coors party ball and y'all sat around and fucking tried to pump it until it was foam and then drink beer it all seems so fucking depressing like why was everyone in such a rush to like fucking like drink that's what our parents did and shit so i was never really into it but i was a teenager so sometimes i went along with it and my friend mike bellicose who was the guy in clerks who's uh when dante goes uh 37 my girlfriend sucked 37 dicks <laughs> and he goes in a row that's the dude he was supposed to be silent bob that's who i wrote the role of silent bob for mike bellicose so, <clears throat> we're at a party of Mike Bellicose's senior year, and uh, it's for Belly's birthday, so it's in the fall. Uh, so this would be in October. And uh, I, for some reason, I, I'm not even some, for some reason, I loved Animal House. Uh -huh. And so I just, you know, wanted to be fucking Bluto so badly at the party. And so, um, Bluto, if you remember seeing from Animal House, like takes a fucking thing of what Southern Comfort or whatever to fucking drinks it down. Jack Daniels drinks yeah. it down and then smashes the bottle. So, uh, they had a, a, I think this might be a 1.5 liter, maybe not, but they started making pop off vodka, had a, you know, they was always in glass bottles. Yeah. This was the year they started putting in plastic bottles like soda, <laughs> like a two liter soda thing. Okay. So we're at Belly's birthday, crowd's not even there yet and shit. Uh, they're like, Smitty, what do you want to drink? And I was like, get me fucking Oy, pop Oy, off. Smitty? That was, yeah, well my last name is Smith. So in high school, there were a bunch of people that uh, called me ass. Smitty. So fucking, I said, give me the pop off. And so all night long I had this thing of pop off vodka, 1.5 liter, and it was plastic so you could squeeze it. So I didn't mix it or anything like that, and I didn't have a cup. I just literally drank from the thing, and I would fucking squeeze it. 
so that I was forcing fucking vodka <laughs> into my system like some sort of party animal. Right. Um, within a half an hour of the party started, I was retired to Mike's sister's bedroom, Nellie Bellicose. Um, he's like, stay here, you'll be safe. <laughs> Close the fucking door. I didn't know where the lights were, I didn't know anything. Fucking, I knew Belly's room well and I knew the downstairs, but I never went into Nellie's room and shit. And I was blitzed out of my fucking <laughs> mind, just so fucking beyond drunk. So I'm feeling sick, I've drank so much. I, you know, I'm fucking probably alcohol poisoning at this point. So I start grabbing things to puke into. Um, just fucking randomly, just blah, 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 and fucking couldn't fucking move. And then my girlfriend came in at one point and she's like, are you all right? I was like, I think I'm gonna die. She's like, all right, I'm gonna go get drunk. And she left. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then finally, like, I was like, I gotta go home. And they got me up um, and my mom came and picked me up. And my mom brought me home. My dad had gone to work already. He worked late at nights and shit. So it was just me and, and my mom. My sister and brother were out of the house at this point. And so my mom could have been so fucking horrible, you know, and just destroyed my life. But I was so fucking drunk that I was beyond honest with her and super fucking gra grateful and appreciative and complimentary, apparently. So like I'm so drunk, she's like, "What? What did you do?" And I was like, "We went to Belly's. It was Belly's birthday, and I got so drunk I threw up in everything, Mom. <laughs> everything and stuff. But you know what? You're the best mom that ever lived. <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I'm drunk. I'm saying it because it's fucking true. <laughs> and I didn't curse in front of my mother and shit. And she was charmed by the whole thing. Yeah, and I so. She was like, you know, instead of being like, you're fucking grounded, she was like, you know, you probably shouldn't do this, Tiger, you know. <laughs> but tell me again what a good mother I am. So. And so we sat out around talking. It was actually wonderful and stuff. So why stupid? Because the next fucking morning, I went up to Belly's to help clean up and shit. Uh, and Ms. Bellicose met me at the door, and she's like, you're not allowed back in the house for a while, <laughs> Kevin Smith. And I said, why? And fucking Nellie came out, his sister, uh, and she was like, because you puked in every one of my drawers, man. <laughs> I was so drunk, I just kept opening drawers and going, Bleh! <laughs> Bleh! and I fucking like systematically puked in every one of her drawers. She's like, I had to throw away all my t-shirts, my underwear. Fuck you, Kevin Smith. <laughs> Dumbest fucking thing in the world, man. Um, you, you got a smart one? Smartest, yeah. Uh, wow, I don't know if I do. Or I don't know if I want to try and compete with that. <laughs> that well, was a I dumb mean, one. That you're was, no, that was a writer, right? So, like, I assume a lot of your shit came out of being drunk. No. No? No. Uh, I, I, I used to... <laughs> hey, is the assumption that all writers are drunk? Or high, yeah. I mean, Stephen King, cocaine, you know, you just got to... No, so it's like weird. What a weird on. stereotype, but you're right. It's true. Everybody in the arts I, and I imagine vibes... imagine what Mark somewhere. Twain was doing. Good Lord. What did he do? I don't know, but you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he must have done the lamest drugs in the world. He'd be like, no, no, I they mean, paint a fence. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, the man still holds the record for the amount of N-words in a written, right? So, like, I mean. Is the, does he the record for what? For the N-word in written text? Well, Mark the Twain? N-word. I thought you, for some reason, I thought you were saying he holds the record for the most written words. I'm like, <laughs> how do you know that? Like, no. that's amazing. Yeah. Shakespeare holds the record he, for the most created the words. The most what words? Created words. He created either alligator or crocodile. One of those words did not exist before Shakespeare. I, like, I am so high enough to enjoy <laughs> your version Weird of the show, words. man. Like... <laughs> That is tremendous. Do you have a drunk uh, one? I, I do. It's not as awesome as that. But <laughs> no, mine wasn't awesome. It was great. I, uh, I, I would go to Comic-Con, especially the first five or six years of, of my Comic-Con attendance. Mm. And this was when I was working for Entertainment Weekly. And the EW party was, at its beginning, the EW sci-fi party. Like it was EW, partnered with the Science Fiction Channel, which you know, may or may not Did have... Did EW? Entertainment Weekly. Right. Entertainment okay. Weekly. Okay. Um, That's EW. Yeah. EW, that EW. And so I would go to that party, and it was EW and sci-fi, and I would get like a little bit hammered, and <laughs> then like 
roll up on B-level science fiction actors <laughs> and like tell them how much I love them. <laughs> and so I, uh, I had moderated a Battlestar Galactica panel. It was like the women of Battlestar. And so it was like, it was, it was Mary McDonnell and Katie Sackhoff and Trisha Helfer and, and, uh, and, and I think Grace Park was on it too. Can't remember, it was a while ago, I was drunk. And, and, uh, and I go to this party and I had had like just enough liquid courage to like roll up on Mary McDonnell and be like, you know what? Uh, my wife is cool with it. You could come live with us. <laughs> and she said, that's adorable. And I said, no, but for real though. And she says, yeah, no. But then we launch into this like 30 minute conversation about the role of like women and power and how women wield power that's different from men and, why, and all of this stuff that I barely remember because I was just drunk enough. Um, that I could have this conversation with the president of the colonies and like, she was the president. She played the president of yeah, Battlestar Star Galactica. Galactica. Right, right, okay, okay. The, she was the president. She's my president. So, right. <laughs> um, what was she, the secretary of education? She was, she who got the bump because everybody else was dead. I was say, Warren Buffett had a mistress for the last 20 or 30 years of his wife's life and is now with her. Like his yeah. wife was like, listen, you're the most Wealthy man in the world, do whatever the fuck you want to do. This conversation takes the weirdest fucking <laughs> I, know, like, wait. I was like waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm like, why are we talking about Warren Buffett? Well, just because he said, like, you can come live with us, even though he's a married man. Warren Buffett literally did that, and someone was like, fuck, okay. Like, you don't say no to the You were saying man Mark pulled a Warren Buffett. Exactly. Yeah, but he just Which didn't have the money. Which has never been said before <laughs> in the history of the world. Um, but that is, that is the convention that I met Trisha Helfer, and she was not apparently um, disgusted enough by me that like <laughs> 10 years later, I said, hey, do you wanna do a podcast together? And she said, yes, you were charming once, um, and that might've been the liquid courage. Charming, I'm sure. You know, I- uh, And then you hit her with like, my wife said you could come live with her. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great question. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. He's winning. You hold on to this, you take one of those, and we do one of these. Goddamn pleasure, man. Um, the, all right. The Wizard of Menlo. What, what? I'm going back home Wednesday. Yeah. What is the date on? You can go to, to LA Live any oh, day, yeah, yeah, whenever you want. Up. And I think you can use it back east, too, like at a 40X theater back there. No. Oh, there they may be one, have one there, too. They have them all over the place. Check the internets, man. We're fucking, like, selling, man. Low-key <laughs> scalping. Uh, hey, what's your name? Hi, I'm Michelle. Michelle? Hi, Michelle. Yes. Everyone give it up for Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, what can you tell us about Warren Buffett? Uh, pretty much nothing except I like Jimmy Buffett a little bit. That's the closest I can come. That's his uh, younger brother, right? Something like that. <laughs> I think so. Um, what, what can we do for you? Um, so... Uh, been a fan of you for a long time. Thank you. Been a fan of these genre things for a long time, but I have never read comic books, Ooh. ever. I find them to be distracting because they're not linear, and I'm a very kind of anxious, jumpy person. Right. So I'll look at a comic book. I'm a little nervous, sorry. Don't be. Um, I'll look at a comic book, and I literally can't pay attention. It's like one word, oh, what? And I, I so I bought my first comic book recently, and I got Umbrella Academy because I really love the show. I was about way, halfway man. through. I'm actually not done with the book yet, but I picked it up. I was at Barnes and Noble, and I picked it up, and I looked at it, and I was like, "Wow, I'm actually I, I'm on the third page, and I haven't ran away yet." Right. So that's my first book. But I was kind of curious what you think. There is so many comics out there that I don't even know where to start. So I was just kind of, I should go to somebody who maybe is a little bit of an authority on the subject, and you guys are that. Um, so where do you think I should start? What yeah, I mean... Done and done. He's going to list a bunch for a in a second, but what I'm going to tell you is um, if you find reading comics distracting... Yes. This is just a helpful tip. Maybe it's not helpful. The reading comics online, like mm -hmm. those apps that are like comic Like comicology and stuff like mm -hmm. that? I'm aware of it. Yeah. Unbelievable how they just... Once you tap it, it will tell you where to fucking go. It, you won't be distracted because it goes panel to panel, balloon to balloon. Okay. Sometimes for people who aren't like raised in the art form and shit like sure. just following the story is difficult because of the layout and whatnot but when they put a comic in like comicsology app or whatever you just tap it and it takes you to everything you're supposed oh, to see dope. in order and stuff it could be 
helpful to train for like the real comic book yeah page. well because i've always well, how interesting i never thought about that like you, if you're it's, unfamiliar it's very, with it. yeah it's because it's not linear i've always thought that if the pictures were on this page and the words were on this page nah, i would do better there are some that were like that well, you can find some comic books like that early on in your podcast i remember you speaking about um i was talking to them about this um about uh alan moore's uh saga of the swamp thing and i always wanted to read it and i couldn't i can't yeah <laughs> so, on the app it's easy it's, it might be okay. easy for you to read it on the app man right on um, yeah, get hit her with some. Naturally, I'm uh, going to go like, oh, you got to read The Dark Knight Returns. Um, what, uh, if, if left to your own devices, what kind of other books would you read? Because it's like, it's easy to just say, you should read this thing, but I don't know if you sure. even like that thing. Well, um, I will say that one of the things I've entertained is Dark Tower, because I'm currently reading Dark Tower, the books. Mm -hmm. And I love Stephen King. I love mystery shit. <laughs> um, and I love celebrity autobiographies. Those are the three things I love to read. Oh, damn. So I know that's such a random thing. Okay. But, but anyway, those are my this three favorite things. This is not a, um, it's not, I wouldn't call this, well, I guess not it is kind Stephen of a King, celebrity sorry, biography, <laughs> but do you remember Brian Bendis wrote Fortune and Glory years ago? Yeah. About his first time he came to Hollywood to like sell something or work on something? It's, it's like done with, you know, practically stick figure drawings and stuff. But it's a pretty gripping fucking what tale. What was it called again? Fortune and Glory. Remember this. Um, Not gonna remember. Brian <laughs> Bettis. It was his the independent is, work. It'll be on the podcast. Oh, true. Yeah, that's true. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Um, what else? Watchmen, of course, is a classic. The Alan Moore Swamp thing run is fantastic. If it looks daunting, get it on the app. It'll tell you exactly where to look, what panels okay. to go to. Um, I think Alan Moore's From Hell would also be really interesting. Like if you like thrillers and you like mysteries, mm -hmm. like it is Alan Moore's version of the Jack the Ripper. Oh, dope. Crimes. And oh, it's I love serial killer fat shit. as fuck. Like Eddie Campbell did the art. It's gorgeous and wonderful. Are you familiar with Neil Gaiman's Sandman run? I'm aware of it. I, I'm aware of Neil Gaiman in general. Fall oh into it before, like they're apparently going to be making <laughs> a series very soon, I guess, right? Yeah. Now would be the time to tap into it so that when the series happens, you're fully prepared and whatnot. But that's some of the best comic book writing that's ever been done. So. Matt Wagner did a book called Mage years ago, The Hero Discovered. He's done a series of Mage um, books, but the first one was kind of an Arthurian legend. Okay. Um, it's a great book. There are a couple of books that DC put out under the Paradox Press banner. Like Beautiful Stories for Ugly Children. Um, yeah, but they did Road to Perdition, which ah, eventually became right. oh, like the, the Tom movie. Hanks movie, mm -hmm. yeah. based on a comic book, and History of Violence, which basically eventually oh. became oh, I love that movie. The, the Vigo movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're both comic books first. Um, and then almost anything Vertigo did before they went away. Yeah, I think... Going back to like when they first started. That's all the grown up -y stuff. And yeah. that's before we even touch the character, the, the cape and cowl stuff. Um, yeah, but okay. yeah, because like I didn't want to like be like, oh, of course I should read these kind of very large, everybody knows about them, because, well, sure, but I already know them. And I'm going to be prejudiced of my preconceived notions. Right, so right, I feel right. like trying to read even stuff that came before, it's, you know, it's like, I just started watching Next Generation, because I'd mm. never watched it and only ever watched the movies, and it's weird. Because right. I'm just like, wait, but I already have this opinion. Right, right. So I'd rather watch something I really don't have, an, I mean, read something I don't have any knowledge of. Yeah. I mean, I think if Fables Fables is a really strong entry. <clears throat> Why the Last Man is like a perfect beginner's comic because it's very self-insulated. It's just, there's no continuity you need to worry about. There's no other characters you need to follow. Don't. It is just this story about the last man on earth in a world full of women. And it's impeccably well done. Um, I think the Green River Killer that, uh, that a guy named Jeff Jensen wrote about his, it's a sort of biographical book about his father, who was Tom Jensen, who hunted the Green River Killer for real, oh. and like caught him. Yeah, and, like, no, this is him. all scratch on the right, it's just for me. Yeah, as as <laughs> and so it's like a real life story about like a son watching his father chase down a serial killer, and what that does to the family, what that does to his impression of his dad, the fucking process of catching a serial killer over years and years and years. Um, it's like both personal and really, really dramatic. So, awesome. um, but yeah, just trying to think again of like, if this was a regular book, what kind of things would you read? If yeah, this was a movie, what would you watch? The more attention, the more. Yeah, yeah but I think like, From okay. Hell also, like that's just giant 
bibliography of awesome, and it's a big oh. slab of Alan Moore doing the very things that he does impeccably well. Okay. This is gonna sound, I'm, I'm gonna sound like such a Bendis fanboy, but did you ever read Torso? Yeah. Torso was this uh, series that Brian Bendis, who's now at DC Comics, he was at Marvel forever, he fucking created Mar Miles Morales and stuff, amongst many other characters. Um, he uh, did this story that I never knew about, which was, uh, you know, Elliot Ness was a real guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and we all know the Untouchables movie, which of course is largely fantastical and stuff like that. Um, after, you know, they got Capone and shit, like, he went to Cleveland, I guess, Ohio, where essentially he tracked the first serial killer, first American serial killer case that they acknowledge, like this is a, somebody that's doing it, somebody who is cutting off heads and limbs, just leaving torsos and stuff. Story I never heard, it's the last Elliot Ness story, it's the case he was working on yeah, when he lost that. his life. Gripping fucking tale, man. <laughs> Nobody talks about it. Well, I mm. think Fortune and Glory, if I remember correctly, was him talking about taking torso out to the world to try to sell it yeah. or something like Fincher that. Fincher eventually like, was developing it for a long like, time. And, and then, then yeah, like nothing David happened. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. But yeah, it's, it's definitely worth looking up, particularly because just, it was a story I'd never heard before. Um, there's a, uh, the, uh, fuck. These cats wrote a Daredevil a couple of years ago, man. Casada and Palmiotti and the Smith character. That's uh, worth <laughs> checking out. There's a Green That's Arrow run guy. by a guy <laughs> named <laughs> Kevin Smith. The, yeah, there's my stuff and shit, but avoid that. There's a lot of good stuff to read. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I think that's like a decent place to start. Yeah, and yeah. if you want more, come on back. All right, right on. So I'm telling you, try the app though. That it's okay. such a one. I love reading comics, but when it w moved to an app, when they introduced that app, I, I had such a blast reading again. Yeah. Just because I, you know, they gamified it, where you tapped it, you're like, "Ooh, let's see where they want yeah. me to look." I don't want to look there. <laughs> and I'd fight the little <laughs> robot and shit like yeah. that. Don't fight the robot. Don't fight the future. Accept it. Yeah. But definitely get the app, and that's, that's a good way in. Awesome. Give it up for her, ladies and gentlemen. She Thank won. Thank you. Come get your shit. <laughs> this. This. You take a hat. You take one of these. Thank you so Pleasure. Much. Nice to meet you. Nate, where are we going next? The last of the finest. Did we lose Nate? Did we go to the bathroom? You ran over here oh. for the mic. What's your name, okay. man? Uh, Otto. What is it? Auto, O T T O, O T T O, o -T -T -O. like car, like Autobot. Auto. 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 Yes. Everyone, give it up for Auto. <laughs> My name is Otto. I like to get black. Uh, so growing up, I really loved the Tim Burton Batman films. Mm. And then, like maybe eight years passed before I rewatched them. I got to Batman Returns, and uh, that's a movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, people, I think people tend to remember it fondly and then watch it and go like, I, I don't would, remember this. I would always recommend it to my friends as the darkest Batman film. Right. And like, that's why it's so good. And then now I would constantly like quote it, um, like Poontang and French Flipper. Right. Um, so, well, my question is, um, we already saw what Burden did with the DC films. Mm -hmm. Film, how do you wish that prime Burden had tackled um, on the Marvel side. Ooh. Burton directing a Marvel movie? Prime Burton. What's Prime Burton? At his like, best? Like Batman, like 80s, 90s. I mean, you know, Burton, you know, he's, you know, he's still got it. Uh-huh. That was honestly like fucking, that Dumbo movie is fucked up. Like that, that he was able to get away with that movie because it it's a Disney movie that fucking like makes fun of Disney and not even in a cutesy warm way in a way of like you guys you know you're talking about Walt fucking Disney himself right so I was kind of subversive man All right. um, but I understand what you're saying Tim Burton when everyone was like oh my god he's a wonderkind um, what Marvel character Tim Burton on Squirrel Girl which sounds dirtier than I meant it, but fucking, you know what I'm saying. He can handle that material pretty damn well. Um, you? Um, I think, I think I go X-Men. I, I think that he, his affinity is so much for the monster 
you know, it's so much for the outcast. It's so much for the people who don't fit in. Yeah. It's set in this bucolic setting, much like the, a lot of his work is about, like the perfect manicured grounds and this gorgeous mansion and like everything should be perfect, but isn't because you've got a house full of just the unwanted and the unloved. And I think that speaks directly to the filmmaker that he is at his best. You know, it's the Edward Scissorhands Edward. Edward. It's, it's even Mars Attacks to a certain degree. Like, but then I also kind of want him to make a Thing movie yeah. because, because he loves outsiders who don't fit in so well. Just, I'm a dude who's, I, I left on this spaceship and I was a man and I came back and I'm a giant fucking rock and I have to live like this and I have to like, I can't get married like this, can I? I can't have kids like this, can I? I can't hold another fucking job like this, can I? Like, what do I do? Where do I go? Here are the only people that I know who know who I was and treat me like a man. <coughs> Bless you. Thank Bless you. you. Sorry. But yeah, that's, that's kind of where I go. Like, finding the outcasts and letting him swing. But then I also want him to do Doctor Strange, because imagine what yeah. fucked up. Oh, that's a fucking good call. Yeah, Tim Burton on Doctor Strange. Yeah, I like the other two. I like Scott. <laughs> I, like what, I like what Scott's doing. But I'm just saying, I'm trying to think of characters. Yeah. That would be a good one. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. Venom. Excellent fucking call. Yeah, these are good Tim Burton characters. Howard the Duck. Yeah. Yes, the most Tim Burton. Did Ern- where are you, Ern- There you are. Excellent fucking pull. Um, fuck, man, those are good. Anyone else? Carnage. Carnage, well, in the Venom world, of course. Punisher. Tim Burton on the Punisher? Uh, He'd be all emo and shit. <laughs> um, Nightcrawler. See? Fucking A, man. Tim Burton on Nightcrawler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, wow, it's so weird. How great. I never thought about that. Tim Burton doing Marvel. Well, and it's a possibility we could see it. Yeah. He's a Disney kid now, predominantly, and that's all fucking Disney. I, you know, we could, I bet you that's not like far-fetched. Like, if you're Tim Burton right about now and, like, you know, Dumbo just happened, don't you think you'd be like, give me a Marvel movie fast? Well, Stranger, uh, Doctor Strange is going to deal with the multiverse, right? Yeah. So. Well, now. Some weird shit. Let's. Okay. So, who could he do? Not even. I mean, let's fucking. Let's pretend that it's right now. Okay. Like, who's left that we'd like to see them making a movie out of that he could literally just fucking go? Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. <laughs> Third learned? time's a charm. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. Look, look, is he a potential FF guy? Would he handle the Fantastic Four well? Mm. <laughs> Did somebody say, don't do it? <laughs> no. Just back away, man, slowly. Um, Scarlet Witch, good call. But uh, they've already I- established her kind. House of M. It's, yeah, that makes it, sense. It's too bad there's already a New Mutants movie because he would be good on New Mutants. Yeah. Yeah, whatever happened to that New Mutants movie? It's, you know, they made a movie. Did you see that, uh, what's his name? Noah Hawley is the guy that does Legion. Legion. Yeah. He just said officially that Doctor, there was a Doctor Doom standalone movie that he was writing mm-hmm. and now it's dead because no, of that bad. deal and stuff. So it went away. We almost had a Doctor Doom movie by the guy that did Legion. That'd be a fucking mind fuck. Um, but back to Tim Burton, man. Ooh, who said that? Fucking stand up and take a bow. Applaud for that man. <laughs> but to be fair, he did do Dark Shadows. Maybe we don't want him touching vampires again. Basically, it's who do you want to see Johnny Depp play? At this <laughs> <time>? <laughs> That's a good point. Um, I mean, you know, there's a world where he could pull off Namor mm-hmm. if they were ever to do that. I mean, you'd need somebody visionary to take you under the sea after what James Wan and crew did with Aquaman, you know, Marvel's going to have to have a completely different fucking oceanic take. Tim Burton could be good for that. Fucking Moon Knight. Yes, the motherfucker who gave us Batman on Moon Knight. Who said that? Stand the fuck up. 
Give that man applause. <laughs> Duh. Oh my God, man. Perfect. What an easy, let's go pitch that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. It's a no-brainer, man. That gives him another bite at the Batman apple, too, to more or less. I mean, not like, that we want him to have another bite at that apple, but... <laughs> no, you, you could, I mean, look, man, fucking 1989's Batman, Tim Burton's Batman, still stands out. Like, and you, you remember how fucking important it was. Like, mm. I'm taking nothing away from Endgame. Mm. Do you remember the fucking excitement oh, hell yes. of that fucking the summer? Everybody waiting for June 23rd, people cutting the bat symbol into their fucking heads. And that's not just like people I knew. That was like that was real life news. people on the news and shit. Oh, it was fucking huge. There was no internet in 89, so all the information came from the news yeah. or the newspaper. And when they cast fucking Michael Keaton, it was so fucking big, it broke the internet then. And there was no internet. Like, yeah, it broke the cover of Time magazine. <laughs> like, this is Batman? So Question that mark? dude, man, like who did Batman, think about it. Like he's had a career since then, many, made many movies. How many years? Is it 30 years since Batman? Yeah, we're yeah. up on the 30th anniversary. In 30 years since he's made a costume superhero adventure. His first one, the one that defined his fucking career and shit. To step back into the genre knowing he's learned so much since that one and to take over Moon Knight, that is the greatest fucking movie we'll never see, man. <laughs> I'm going to be haunted by your beautiful fucking idea. Fuck, that was good, man. You deserve, you know what? You're going to win something too. You get to walk away with a fucking poster for that too. But that was a, did we hit it? We hit it. We hit it. That was a great question. You win some shit. Give it up for him, man. You got that shit. And the man here gets his poster. We got an extra poster. your pile right there. Goddamn pleasure. Fuck, that took yeah. us on a journey of imagination. Like Willy it. Wonka, but the one we all like. Hey, man, thank you. <laughs> you mean the one that Tim Burton didn't make? <laughs> yes. That's right. He did that for me. Um, all right, fuck, man. What is that? That is a book I signed for somebody. It's just for you to sign it? Yeah, yeah I mean, you can if you want. I wrote I an X-Men story in here, but you can You wrote it. an X-Men story in here? Yeah. What one? Uh, I mean, I don't know. This book is big. But you, you wrote one? I wrote a Nightcrawler Origins. Did issue. you really? Yeah. When? God. This was seven, eight years ago, maybe? Yeah. Basically, it's Dumbo. It's, it's Kurt Warner as the fucking circus freak who... Um, fuck. Mystique, in, at least in their continuity, was also his mother, because sure. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a Dumbo story about the circus freak who has to escape uh, the son of a gypsy, and the circus owner was being super fucking brutal, and so his mom, Mystique, takes him out, and they run free into the wilderness to then be chased by Nazis. But... It was a tearjerker, because why the fuck wouldn't you want it? That's the saddest of the X-Men origin stories. It is, yes. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, Magneto's pretty sad, too. In the movies, yeah. at least. Yeah. Well, but, it didn't start sad. But, oh, my God, fucking, like, who knew? I, I did. <laughs> well, for a second there, it didn't seem like you did. You're like, I don't know, it's one of these in here. Well, because I also wrote a Wolverine <laughs> story. Um, it was part of their like Wolverine 500 issue that came out. It was the, uh, the idea was once a year Wolverine wants to get rip roaring drunk but can't because he's got this fucking healing factor. Right. So he finds the one, like a washout from Xavier's Academy whose power was he could dampen any mutant superpower within a 10 foot radius. So he like gets this guy named Chester like out of his job at a Kinko. So like tonight's the night, bub. And like they, it's called one night only. Like he just goes out to get hammered because here's the only way for him to do it. And like he wants to get into a bar fight because I never get into bar fights. It's 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 a good drunk Wolverine story. Fucking hey man, because Mark Brighton X Men, give it up for him. We. Um, all right, kids, uh, don't forget, man, if you want to come see us do this uh, uh, live, we do it again next week here on Tuesday. We do it next Tuesday, and we do it in uh, Anaheim cool. on Sunday. That's right. Tuesday here at uh, the Scum and Villainy Cantina again next week, or uh, you can see us on Sunday afternoon at uh, PowerCon if you're down in Anaheim and stuff. Uh, Fat Man on He-Man. That'll be interesting. <laughs> uh, but up to, uh, regard, uh, uh, failing that, we have no show left to give you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you enjoy yourselves this evening?
I cannot thank you enough for coming out, but there is no show without the guy standing to my left, as we heard. He was carrying the show all night because for the first half, I was like, where are we? And shit like that. <laughs> Give it up for Master Mark Bernardin. And that is Fat Man on Fat Man Beyond for this week. Drink. Uh, <laughs> fat Man Beyond for this week. I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Mark Bernard. Tune in next week. Same fat time. Same fat channel. Smodcast.com or YouTube.com slash Kevin Smith. Happy birthday, Shannon. See you guys later, man. Good night.